Hello everyone, my name is Sarah and I am a co-active life coach as well as the host for MindPod. Welcome to the third episode. This is a place where I will be inviting interesting human beings to explore an idea. There's no right, no wrong, just browsing. So let's see what we can stir up. Our guest today is Sanya Seyfi, who was an art director in an advertising company in the UAE, who quit her job back in 2016 and packed her bags to become a backpacker till today. She's been to more than 30 countries, experiencing different lifestyle with the locals. Also, she's my younger sister. So let's invite her in. Hi, Sanya. Hello. Hey, where are you today, by the way? Uh, I'm in Tokyo, in my parents' house at the moment. Yeah, so you're taking a break due to COVID, right? Yeah, I just came back from Australia because me and my partner, we were stuck there like two, three extra months and now the planes are flying. So I just came back to Japan and now I'm here. Great. So today we're going to talk about interracial relationships. And for those of you who don't know, our parents are interracial couple. Our mom is Japanese and our dad is Pakistani. And we've lived pretty much most of our lives in Dubai. So we've had a very multicultural sort of environment growing up. And currently I'm engaged to a Greek guy. And my sister is uh, in a relationship with a German. So there's a lot going on here, don't you think, Sanya? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Our parents are going to have interesting grandchildren, for, for sure. sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, what is an interracial relationship? It's a relationship between different race or ethnicity. I'd like to add that interracial relationships can also be a relationship where both people are from the same country, but they live in different cultures, so it could be like... Uh, a black and a white relationship but both of them are from the states or even if we dated either a Japanese or a Pakistani I would still consider that interracial because we were brought up in different culture right yeah 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 that's true so what are the good things about an interracial relationship the first thing I thought of was that when you let go of that border there are more options to finding a potential partner mm -hmm. yeah and what's good about that is you get to find someone who will be as close to you as you are in the way of thinking or in the way of living so i think that's a good thing when you're sort of willing to be in an interracial relationship yeah i think these days not many people are opposed to being in an yeah. interracial relationship it's just, yeah, like you said, it's not like a massive factor mm -hmm. for you. Then there's a potential for you to meet somebody that's very compatible to you. Yeah, absolutely. I think generation today is much more in a global culture. So if we were to compare our parents' generation to our generation, I think even the you know family members are more open to accepting different person so it's kind of easier today than before yeah that's for sure yeah so another thing that i want to add is we exchange a lot of different things such as different ways of living that includes culture tradition and within that we've got food we've got festivals we've got a whole ceremony like a celebration they're all so different and we get to experience that and also a different way of thinking so that kind of gives us a really good exposure maybe an eye-opening moment um, and picking what works better so we might have a complete different perspective on the same matter or events and it's like we're almost like being introduced to a new world so what are your thoughts about that Sanya? I just believe that in any relationship, you're going to see a different perspective if you're willing to understand the other person. So it's not just necessarily interracial, but with interracial uh, relationships, you see a bit more of that yeah. because it's not just the person 
that you are in a relationship with, it's also their culture. Yeah, absolutely. So one good thing about being in、uh, a relationship with my German partner is that it's very important for his parents to celebrate Christmas together. But my parents don't care. Yeah. <laughs> and it's very important for my mom's family to spend Obon together, which happens in August. So we have like two solid holidays where we get to spend time, where I can make my partner's parents happy, and we can make our parents happy. So I think that's a perk, and you get to celebrate two different holidays. True. True. Yeah. And also, like, we get to pick the good stuff, right? Like, as a As a child growing up in an interracial family, you also get to like see what's working, what's not working, what's good, what's better. What are the things that you want to pick from this culture and that tradition? And I think in that sense, we also benefited a lot because we already were introduced to different perspectives. I think for people like us who had two different perspectives since we were really young, it was. Easier for us to adapt to a new culture. Like we're third culture kids, and、mm. we grew up in Dubai. Before that, we used to live in Japan, and we always knew that our dad was different. And people didn't necessarily treat us completely different, but we were aware of that. Especially、uh, me and Sarah, because we went to school here in Japan. So it wasn't. The hardest thing. I mean, obviously we had language barriers,、mm-hmm. but it wasn't the most difficult thing, I believe, to move to Dubai. If you were completely Pakistani, I think it's easier、mm-hmm. because the it's still in the same zone, it's like same religion. Yeah, but I think compared to somebody who was fully Japanese, I think it was easier for us to adapt to a new environment in that sense. Yeah, true, and it, that also makes it easier for us to pick another nationality because we're already in a mixed culture, so we're much more open to being with a partner with a complete different culture and background. Yeah, I think we're not afraid to date somebody that don't necessarily live like us.、Mm-hmm. I mean, we were neither super Japanese nor. Super Pakistani. So I think anybody that dates us, also our nationality or where we grew up, is not like the biggest factor.、Mm-hmm. So the next thing that I want to highlight here is the more we have interracial couples, the more I guess we're gonna have an open society where there will be less borders, less restrictions, or less limitations to who you could be with. And even in today's world, a lot of people, including us, face racism. Yeah, you know, but it's been very difficult for us to be racist. I mean, I'm not saying、uh, when I was younger I was completely not racist. I think there was a bit of like a prejudice that I had towards certain kind of people as well. And I also differentiated them as a different kind of people. But now,、uh, growing up in that environment and also growing up in the UAE, I think I'm more willing to speak up for somebody else that is being treated differently or that's being discriminated against just because of the way they look or because of where they're from, like getting paid less. Or made fun of, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Like because we live in Dubai and we've got so many nationalities here as well, so it's insane how people treat us differently based on where they perceive we're from.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we'll touch base on that in the next question, which is the challenges that we may face as an interracial couple. I have something to say、yeah. about this point. Okay. So my partner and I, yeah, we are an interracial couple, and there are a lot of things that's difficult for us. But not because we're not compatible; like we're completely compatible. It's just because we both have different passports. So, for example, right now during COVID, I had to come back to Japan because it's the only country I can come back to, and he had to travel to Germany. So 
I mean, interracial but same nationality would not face this problem. But because we are also both different nationalities, now we're doing a long distance relationship and we just don't know how long this is going to last. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this situation is very unique and nobody mm -hmm. expected this. So, you know, you weren't expecting to live apart from him, not knowing how long that would be. Mm -hmm. And that's due to the fact that you guys are from two different countries. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah. There's also societal challenges. Like I also mentioned, like people are still racist today. And it's, it's also like this um, stereotype. So me and my partner, we're the stereotype Asian um, European couple. My partner is blonde, blue eyes, white, you know, and I look, I don't look Japanese or Pakistani. I'm aware of that. I look like I'm from Southeast Asia. So people have this image that, oh yeah, she's with him for money, mm -hmm. you know, and it does get to you. Of at course. Some point. Yeah, it does get to you, especially like because we were traveling and like, even if I'm paying, they wouldn't even talk to me. I mean, that's not the issue between like interracial couple is more of like that country's perception of females yeah perception of like couples but also it plays a big factor because he's a white male and i'm an asian female people automatically assume he's richer than me you know what i mean yeah 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 the societal it's really annoying stereotype yeah it is yeah. it is annoying yeah and it doesn't feel nice for somebody to think like, oh yeah, he's with her because she's this cute little Asian that's submissive, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And it also doesn't feel nice for him to feel like, oh yeah, his, uh, this girl is with him because he's white and male and rich because we're not like that at all. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, for sure. It doesn't make you feel good about how they perceive and even the looks that you might get or the treatment yeah but that's exactly what makes it more interesting to have more interracial couples where that becomes normalized now i'm not yeah. encouraging everyone to get married to a complete different nationality that's not my point yeah for sure yeah but it's on the rise right it is on the rise yeah i think yeah, which people is a are nice thing yeah, people are becoming more accepting to getting married to a different nationality or a different background. And it's really nice. Like in Dubai, I've met so many mixed people like Korean, German, uh, Syrian, Chinese, um, Spanish, Chinese, Emirati, Japanese, Bahraini, Japanese. Like there's like so many mixes and they all have um, a very different outlook on the world. You know, and that opens up this this whole new world of like, you know, what is racism? Mm -hmm. You know, so I think that's very exciting, especially us being the second generation of mixed culture race. It's super exciting to see that. So I believe that the further the gap between the background, such as culture and tradition, the more conflict can happen. It's not a guarantee that you would face any conflict. I mean, based on the, the person you're with and your personality. However, I think the difference will be huge. So keeping that in mind, I think family can be a challenge for some people. So even if you've accepted the person and uh, that person has accepted you and you are in a relationship, your families may have a language barrier. They might not be comfortable. They might get overwhelmed. So, you know, uh, it could go a lot of ways and of course you know there's so many ways that families try to support your idea or support your relationship together but there could be a challenge much more than a couple from the same background yeah i think that's as well like on a personal level between two people in an interracial relationship i think there has to be a bit more work on trying to understand where they came from you know, like growing up, we kind of struggle that with understanding both mom and dad's perspective about things and what we were allowed to do and what we weren't. Mm -hmm. 
and I feel like grown up now like I understand why dad said certain things like why we couldn't do them and I also understand why mom thought certain things uh, were bad for her kids because you also consider their background like when she was growing up you know her family was like this her um, environment was like this and it's completely different from what my dad went through Mm -hmm. you know so I think we're able to do that but for them who where my mom was completely Japanese and my dad is completely Pakistani for them to really understand each other to put themselves in their shoes it's very difficult to grasp that I think yeah I mean we can understand Mm -hmm. why they differ but I don't Mm -hmm. think we can even understand Mm -hmm. how surprised they were when they found out that they have a completely two different opinion on a certain topic, for example. And it was like a surprise to all of us. It's like, oh, really? You think that way? And it's like, oh, mom, you think that way? And we're like, we think completely (laughs) different. Like, what is going on? So (laughs) uh, there was always an element of surprise, um, good or bad. And um, as you mentioned, you know, like perception of how things are seen based on their background can be a conflict as well. So uh, what's okay in one culture might not be okay in the other, like you said. Exactly. Yeah, and lack of awareness. So today, sure, like today, you know, you can just Google or YouTube and find out uh, a lot of things about different cultures. However, um, not everyone's going to have an entire, like, map of information over the countries right so if you don't have that awareness and if you are with a person that is from a complete different background then you're probably going to be expecting a lot of surprises Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and also i wanted to mention in today's world with internet and everything it's easier for me being with a german person where he is also exposed to a lot of different cultures you know Mm -hmm. because germany has people from different races from all over the world actually so it's easier for us to get along or understand where we both are coming from and uh, you mentioned this in like the first topic we spoke the bigger the gap the harder the more conflict two people can have Mm -hmm. in their relationship I think that means like if I mean it doesn't have to be like nationality or like race specific but it's more that it depends on everybody's family like if your family is really tight-knit and really traditional like it doesn't have to be like cultural tradition it can just be family tradition Mm -hmm. i think that's what makes it harder right so you're saying that if two people are already from a different background and then Mm -hmm. they come together and their opinions are also included things can get really complicated yeah i mean what i'm trying to say is if you have like a strong family tradition and your partner does too then there could be a bit more conflict because i feel like in your own society like including family and your environment you're more exposed to like one set of thinking Mm -hmm. i'm not saying it's a single thing you Mm -hmm. know Mm -hmm. But in a whole community, if you think one thing is wrong, you're backed up by majority of the people you know in your own beliefs. So it's very difficult to understand somebody else's belief. True, true, yeah. It doesn't necessarily have to be something that they think is wrong. For example, like wedding, right? So Japan has a very, you know, traditional way of wedding. And I'm sure every other country does as well. So it's like okay what do we pick right so let's say yeah. if, if two people were really keen on having their own traditional wedding what i've seen uh, personally is that they would either have two weddings yeah or they would have like let's say two wedding dresses mm-hmm. to accommodate both the traditions music with food so i think you know, if, if let's say both of them are not willing to compromise or willing to sort of meet in the middle way or sometimes even give the other person more room 
for them to mm -hmm. make it however way they want because it's important to them then that could just become a fight so a wedding is a place where it's supposed to be a really happy place it turns out to be a whole chaos yeah i think um wedding is a really good example because it's a family matter mm -hmm. more than just two people yeah so yeah i think it's a good example where you know one person's parent would want their own traditional wedding mm -hmm. and the other person's parent want like this other cultural wedding exactly uh, even though even though the couple doesn't want any wedding <laughs> sometimes <laughs> you know, yeah so that happens and it's even stronger like this is what i mean in terms of like tradition or like like the community feel because for example for us like we know we understand that in pakistan wedding is a big deal mm -hmm. especially when it comes to daughters yeah so it's a big deal you have to have a massive party you have to invite as many people as possible and that's like a proud moment for a father mm -hmm. but in japan it's not like it is also a big deal but it's not that much of a big deal you know what i mean mm -hmm. one of the reasons why we feel that pakistani weddings are looked upon as a big deal is because it's an investment from the mm -hmm. father to the daughter they work hard just to make sure they have money for the daughter to get married there's a lot of work around it there's the jewelry there's the wedding there's the whole house there's, there's a whole package whereas in japan you don't need to have a house or you don't need to uh you know have a lot of yeah. money to get married because in the wedding ceremony itself people pay right uh, people give that money yeah that's true yeah, yeah. so, so it it's easier so in, japan, in japan how wedding works is that whoever is invited to the wedding depends on your relationship with uh, the bride or the groom but you give them money yeah so they don't have to pay for the whole wedding themselves which is a really nice system yeah it is it is and that's why we think it's more of a bigger deal in pakistan mm -hmm. because it's, it's it's the family really like earning that money to make sure that the daughter's wedding is happening yeah another thing that i wanted to add is i think it makes a huge factor on where both of us or both of you will settle so like mm -hmm. we mentioned earlier like we are japanese pakistani but we were brought up in dubai that makes a huge difference in how we live or what are the expectations yeah. now so if let's say we were to reside either in Japan, like we stayed in Japan or we had moved to Pakistan, the expectations will change. If we lived in Japan, our dad will more likely adapt the Japanese culture over Pakistani culture. But if my mom were to go to Pakistan, then she would have had to adapt to certain cultures in Pakistan. Whether mm -hmm. she likes it or not, there are certain things that uh, that's a social norm there and uh, it's expected. So you know um if that was something that kind of uh, matched her value then that might not have been an issue but if it didn't it could be a big problem i mean we also saw that by us moving to dubai you know because i think dubai like being a muslim country uh, uae and pakistan they have a lot of things they share in common and for my mom to move to a country like that it was also like a completely different experience and she also had to adapt to that you know she had to adapt to the language yeah so moving on with that in mind i want to talk about how to have a healthy relationship i think setting expectations within yourself and the partner makes a lot of things more clear mm -hmm. yeah and of course that requires a lot of communication it's like okay my background this was acceptable this wasn't um till today i still have this in me where this is something very important for me yeah and just have that open communication with each other and when you're listening to all this conversation i think it's very important to keep in mind that our normal is not their normal their normal can look very different mm -hmm. and really discuss what matters to both like what's the top five important things that you you might even consider letting go of the relationship or you will take a stand for it with your partner what are those things and is there any way to embrace that 
and willing to adapt to a certain point based on where you guys decide to live or you know what's the environment going to be like who's going to adapt more what part of you can you not adapt but the willingness of it i think is important yeah i also think like i'm just going back a bit mm -hmm. uh but you spoke about communication and expectations but i think another factor that is very important in interracial relationships is being honest to yourself mm. so like i used to do this and that's why i'm saying that is because you feel like the other person's family or because you understand the other person's background a bit more you kind of say oh yeah he says this because of this and that you so know what being i mean too understanding it's not too understanding but if something is not okay for me you know i need to be honest about that first regardless of where they're from i mean this could be applied to any relationship but i feel like we kind of forgive we also saw that with our parents you know uh we kind of forgive like certain things that that's not making you happy and you kind of like not express that or you kind of um suppress yeah suppress that thing like the it could be anything small mm. you know what i mean or anything big but i feel like we have a tendency to just like suppress that feeling because we understand that we're from a different background right i could see my parents looking at each other and go like well he or she is not going to understand because they are from japan or pakistan but about us no about each other Ah, right, yeah. You know, like it just becomes this trump card of letting go. Like what you yeah. were saying. Yeah. So you can use that all the time like, oh it's fine, yeah. she's Japanese, oh it's fine, he's Pakistani, oh it's fine like you I know. I mean, also like Germany. one thing that we're lucky with is that we can communicate with our partner in a language we are very comfortable with. True. You know, and our parents didn't have that. Yeah, absolutely. Like, my dad had to learn Japanese. Yeah. And same thing with my mom. I mean, they speak in Japanese, but when she moved to Dubai, you know, she tried to learn Urdu and everything. So, like, now that both of them know, I mean, my dad's fluent in Japanese, but uh, now that they, like, now that mom knows certain things Words. in Urdu, I think it makes it easier for them to communicate a bit better. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's also important to be able I mean, we have English. So, anything we want, we are able to communicate in English because like you and your partner, me and my partner, we're very comfortable in English. But at the same time, right now I'm learning German, not just because he is German, but because I want to know who he is when he's speaking German. You know what I mean? Mm. Because I know I'm completely different when I'm speaking Japanese. Oh yeah, absolutely. I feel like um, um, our personalities kind of change when we're in Japan and then when we go to Pakistan and then when we're in Dubai. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, this is all me, you know, but at the same time, like I'm not adjusting to like my surroundings. I'm still myself, but it's just I'm a completely dif different personality when I'm speaking Urdu or Japanese or English. Mm -hmm. I feel like with Japanese it's a bit more. Yeah. Yeah, I also know my partner is probably a completely different person when he's speaking German. Mm. I don't necessarily think I would be super fluent in German as like a native. But I want to be able to understand it. Yeah, it's like a part of him that you're curious to know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've seen that with our dad. When he speaks Urdu, he is yeah <laughs> more vibrant with words and fluent. And there's a really nice flow going on. Even though we don't know how to speak, we can understand. So that kind of gives us yeah. an insight of like, oh, you know, when he is with Pakistani people and when he starts speaking in Urdu, then this is this is him. This is yeah what what he's you, you can gonna. tell he's very comfortable mm -hmm. in Urdu. You know. Oh yeah, he is comfortable. Um, so I also wanted to say that it doesn't mean that interracial people cannot be racist. Absolutely. Yeah, but it's harder you know like mm. okay considering uh me and sarah i don't think we are racist uh, we might have some sort of stereotypes which we try not to 
but for our kids that's going to grow up with their cousins it's harder for them and like as that goes on i mean i keep bringing up states or you know europe but in states everybody's like this complete mix of people and i feel like people that suffer a lot with racism or accepting that they are racist or i don't know um like i feel like it's because they are either on one side and the other like they might be really asian or like they might be really black or really white like i'm not saying all of them struggle with that but i feel like people that grew up in that kind of environment struggle with the acceptance of another race as like the same people yeah yeah you know and for our kids who's going to have like at least three different backgrounds nationality wise they will grow up also di- in different places yeah yeah you know? i wonder what kind of like mindset they're gonna have yeah yeah maybe so, very different from who we are today i mean sometimes our parents can't understand us <laughs> you know it's <laughs> like where do you how did you start thinking like that or what yeah. made you do that um it's, it's so yeah. alien to them and we might face the same thing yeah we would probably face the same thing like you raising your kids me raising my kids there's also a lot of things that they are going to compare with each other you oh know yeah what I mean? mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like we compared a lot of our lives to our cousins uh back in japan or in pakistan and we can think that oh we're lucky mm. not always but a lot of times especially now that we're adults we think we're lucky that um we were a bit different than them and i feel like our kids are even more going to feel that way yeah what you mean by we felt like we were more lucky is because we were doing compare contrast at a younger age mm-hmm. yeah i feel like it's because from a young age we weren't put in a box you know what i mean like we had to like explore who we are where you know, do we, we belong? have a very yeah where we belong like this is like another conversation but uh maybe we can have another podcast for like yeah. third culture kids sure but for us when we became teenagers you know i think a lot of people in dubai also felt this way like it's not exclusive to us or like people who move to a new country that doesn't have the same kind of community that they had back home i think they also feel that but especially with us we were always in search of like where we belong what do we believe in so we had all of these questions pop up in our heads i'm proud of who i am today i feel like i know exactly who i am i know exactly what i want and that's also why like it's easier for me to just quit my job leave and travel yeah and i also think it's the same with you you know what you want you know who you want to be in a relationship with because you've asked these questions already oh yeah a hundred times <laughs> yeah i mean i'm not like we're not young we're not 18 19 you, you know we're in our 30s so like you would think oh yeah you should know that by now but at the same time i feel like we had the opportunity to think about who we are as a person before before we were even uh, aware of us doing that yeah exactly yeah like had i grown up in japan i'd be like oh everyone's doing this or like everyone's enjoying this right now like this is the trend so i'm kind of more pressured into following that trend and there was a period of time where we were like that too you know mm-hmm. but that was also like part of our exploration like oh should we be more japanese and do these things or like oh should we like blend in with our dubai friends yeah. or like oh there's like these bollywood things like okay that's not necessarily pakistani but you know we had a lot of different factors we could take in mm-hmm. to become who we are and like keep questioning what's right for us yeah yeah i think the big part of that is keep questioning yeah <laughs> yeah because we had so many options it's like okay which one is gonna be suited yeah. for me or which one am i gonna value more so there's a lot of questioning we did and i guess as a child it's very confusing you know having yeah. so many different opinions around you having so many different right 
is um, is very confusing. Um, but as we are today at this age, like you said, we can appreciate all of that exposure. Yeah. So another thing I'd like to add here is that just know that you will have a clash. Just know that there will be a very different part of you and part of your partner. It's bound to happen. And yeah. I think it's important that instead of being offended ask them why they think the way they think and really listen to it and see where they're coming from rather than going like oh but in my life this was never the thing or it's not important for me um if you really care about the person and if they have a opposing opinion or ideas just lean into it and see what you find there and you can even question further you know you might like it yeah there's also another thing i want to add like i think this is overall any relationship is to like ask your partner to tell you what his his or her life was you know before meeting you in detail it can take like uh years to like discuss you know and it's not just about oh yeah like when i was three this and that happened when i was six this and that happened it's it's not just that it's like you know how they felt in that moment for example oh when this is just an example oh when my parents split up when i was a certain age this is how i felt or like that's when i decided these things are going to happen or like you know it could be anything yeah but i think you get to know your partner from their perspective of their childhood and i think that's very important especially if you're planning to raise a child together Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I want to add uh, something to that as well. Really listen to the story to know who they are and not to change them for who you want them to be. Especially if there are more differences between the two of you. So the question is, can you accept them for who they are and love them and embrace them for the experiences they've had in their life? Yeah, and especially something that's cultural and traditional. Uh, I think it's very difficult for anybody to change that. Yeah. Like yeah, of course something personal is a lot more difficult than that, mm-hmm. but there's always compromise. There's always adapting to the other person's culture, yeah. you know. Like if you both celebrate Christmas one year is with your family and one year is with mm-hmm. other family. Like yeah. even those small things it can become like something so big. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for joining Sanya. This was great. Yep. Yeah, and I will hope to see you soon. Yeah, I think I'm going to come back Yay. for your episode. Okay, great. Thank you for joining. Thanks. Thank you everyone for tuning in. What are your thoughts on interracial relationships? Please comment below and let me know what you think. And until next time.